Hello everybody. Welcome to the first lesson on ST201 Probability Theory. This is a three credit course and a continuation from ST102. I am Dr. Himalika Abe Sundara and we will start with Chapter 1. I believe that you have completed the warm-up exercise I assigned last week. Since this is more or less a continuation from ST102, I encourage that you refresh the memory on topics we have covered last semester. We learned about probability distributions for both discrete and continuous random variables and we only looked at situations with just one variable, say x. Now in this course, we go one step ahead and apply same concepts to more than one random variable. If the data set contains only one variable, say x1, we call it univariate setup. If it contains two, say x1 and x2, it is bivariate case. If there are more, we end up with multivariate setup. Let me explain this using an example. Consider the set of students who follow statistics as a major subject at this university. If we are only interested in the exam scores of ST102, that is univariate situation. If we want to analyze final exam marks and mid-exam marks of ST102, that is the bivariate situation. If we want to analyze all four courses offered for statistics major students in the first year, that is ST101, ST102, ST103 and ST104. Now there are four variables, X1, X2, X3 and X4. That becomes a multivariate situation. Let's look at bivariate random variables in detail. Consider an experiment of tossing two coins. You are very familiar about this example. Let us define the outcome of the two coins as follows. Random variable X is the outcome of the coin 1 and random variable Y is the outcome of the coin 2. X can contain two possible outcomes while Y also can have two possible outcomes. We can define the sample space as follows. In this 2 by 2 table, the first cell indicates x equals 0 and y equals 0. If we define the value of head to be 1 and value of tail to be 0, we can rewrite the table as above. In this experiment, getting two heads is the outcome 1, 1 getting a head for the coin 1 and getting a tail for coin 2 is 1, 0. The four possible outcomes can be represented as xy pairs. If the two coins are balanced, we can assign equal probabilities to all possible outcomes. Then the table will become 1 over 4 in all cells. We can represent these probabilities as a function also. That is, Pxy equals 1 over 4 when x equals 0 or 1 and y equals 0 and 1 or 0 otherwise. This is the joint probability distribution of x and y. Here is the organization of the content. We will first define the joint probability distribution for discrete random variables, that is the joint probability mass function or JPMF, continuous random variables, joint probability density function, JPDF. Then we will look at the joint cumulative distribution or JCDF and also the marginal probability densities of X and Y. And then finally, the conditional density of X given Y. The definition 1.1, joint probability mass function JPMF. The JPMF of the two discrete random variables x and y denoted as Pxy satisfies the following three conditions. Condition 1 is that Pxy equals the probability that x equals simple x, that is, the random variable x having value x, 
and the random variable y having value y. Condition 2 is that these joint probabilities Pxy should lie in between 0 and 1. Probability is never negative and probability never exceeds 1. Condition 3 is that the total probability is 1. That is, if you sum up over all x and all y, that is the double summation of these probabilities should add up to 1. Now let's look at an example. Let x and y be two discrete random variables with the following joint PMF. The values that x and y can have are both 1 and 2. Can you find the value of c such that above is a valid joint PMF? What we have to do is to apply the condition 3. Doing the double summation, x goes from 1 to 2 and y goes from 1 to 2, apply that summation to the given function and set it equal to 1. That means the constant c times the four possible probabilities equals to 1. Solving this equation, you can get the constant c to be 1 over 18. Now let's rewrite the table. Using this table, you can find the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 and y is less than or equal to 1. This condition is satisfied in two cells, that is p11 and p21. Adding these probabilities will give you 3 over 18 plus 4 over 18, which is 7 over 18. Now, can you find the probability that x equals y? x equals y happens in the cells 1, 1 and 2, 2. By adding these two probabilities, you will get 3 over 18 plus 6 over 18, which is 1 over 2. Now let's look at the continuous situation. Definition 1.2 Joint Probability Density Function or JPDF. The JPDF of the two continuous random variables x and y denoted as fxy satisfies the following three conditions. For any region S of two dimensional space R square, the JPDF is represented as the double integration over x and y. The second condition is that these probabilities should be greater than 0 for all x, y points. And finally, the total probability 1. If you integrate the function f x, y over all x and then over all y, the answer should be 1. Here is an example. Let x and y be two continuous random variables with the following joint PMF. f x, y is k x, y. For the values x to be from 0 to 1 and y to be from 0 to 1 or 0 otherwise. Let's find the value of k such that above is a valid joint PDF and then let's try to find the probability that x is in between 0 to 1 over 2 and y is in between 1 over 4 to 1 over 2. For part a, you can do the double integration of k x y we do the integration always inside out, so we integrate with respect to y first and then with respect to x and set it equal to 1. If you perform this integration, when you do the integration with respect to y, you end up with x y square over 2 evaluate from 0 to 1 and then do the integration with respect to x. By doing this calculation, you can finally get that the constant k is to be 4. Now we can write the function as 4 times xy. Now let's find the answer for part b. That is the probability of this joint density x from 0 to 1 half and y from 1 over 4 to 1 over 2. If you do this integration again with respect to y first and with respect to x, 
you can end up with the answer 3 over 64.